Hey, everybody. Welcome to Radio Labyrinth, the Gen X pop culture podcast that covers any and all things movies, TV, radio, podcasts, comic books, books, uh, gardens, as long as we like them. I'm your host, Tim Andrews, a regionally semi-famous Atlanta radio personality. And uh, these are my co-hosts, Jeff Leboff and Stephanie Swain. And uh, joining us this week, who I'll get to in a second, is Dustin Lawler. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is season five, episode 30, which is the 20th episode from home. I don't get that. We've done 20 of these freaking Zoom episodes. Oh, holy shit. 20 weeks now we've done these from home. Gosh. How many months is that? Oh, I don't know. Three, four. Five months. Fuck me. Hey, well, it's, we're going to be here for a while, so oh well, no sense of complaining. Heads up, we are now recording from home on Monday evening, so the show will now be released on Wednesday mornings, okay? The reason we're doing that is because we are upgrading the YouTube, which I will also get to in a second. Um, I am going to be updating and revising the Patreon page uh, after August 1st, and uh, what I want to do with that is find out from you guys what you would like to see as rewards. I mean, we've done t-shirts, we've done stickers, but stuff that you, that's more than just that. So we'll be talking to you about that. Make sure that if you are a Radio Labyrinth Patreon member that you're looking at the messages, you get an alert in your email anytime we post one. So make sure you have that set so you can contribute uh, to all the stuff we do during the show. Um, our Spotify playlists are all linked in the show description, so please check them out. And if you do have Spotify, please follow like and share them with your friends they're pretty good they're really 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 good this most recent one is fun i like to drive around and listen to it um and uh, the latest episode of mike tv is out and uh, soon they'll be released uh on their own feed how about that um so stay tuned certain people have to figure out how to do rss me included <laughs> Um, so we have, uh, a, a, you know, uh, a guest, occasional guest who's been on the show many times. Uh, and he is also the curator of our Radio Shack on Facebook. It's Dustin Lawler, who will be managing our YouTube page. So let's talk to him and find out what he has planned for us. Hello, Dustin. Hey, guys. Hey, Dustin. What's up, man? Uh, not much. Um, the YouTube page, I'm just looking to try to expand the um, the footprint of Radio Labyrinth. I know you guys have done a lot through the, the podcast and there's a lot of podcasts out there. So opening up YouTube to uh, be able to get to a wider audience, uh, maybe something that's a little more outside of Atlanta as mm -hmm. far as, um, you know, the, the, the hub uh, might be a good way to grow it. So I'm, I'm thinking about um, like last week's episode it was kind of a trial run. I appreciate you guys. Uh, let me do that. It turned out pretty well, I thought. Yeah, you did a great yeah. job. Those graphics are great. Thanks. The um, what I want to do is is keep that up. Um, you know, produce it more um, like a show. Maybe taking some of the uh, elements weekly. Uh, maybe ten minute clips, five minute clips, some funny stuff. Maybe going back and getting uh, some things, some audio, uh, putting it to some artwork. Um, trying to get the red box troll maybe to life. Um, that's my dream. That would be uh, cool. I'd bring him back. He can come back if we could do something with him. <laughs> well, then that's what I'll, I'll aim to do. Awesome. Um, but, but getting those clips out so that we can, uh, you know, sometimes getting things across YouTube is a little harder to do when you're trying to put out an hour plus content. Can uh, I ask so you a maybe, question? Do you, sure. think, do you think that if Jeff and Tim and Ira, when he's on, if they show their balls at the end of every episode, would that help? We don't want to be yeah. a porn hub. <laughs> well, that'd be the best way to guarantee that we never get it monetized. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be it. I love that um, idea of taking little clips and uh, being able to, you know, if something is funny, to to take clips and, and share them, and it's easier to digest a little clip like that than having to watch the whole thing. So, I, and I, it, I, yeah, I think it would pull people in. Those little clips will see, you know, give it a little flavor of what's actually in this you know, hour plus video. Cause when you're talking about YouTube, it's a little different than audio, audio podcast catchers and stuff. They're great. I listen to them at work all the time. It's a great time killer, a, a way to just stream it right to your head all day long. But when you're talking about YouTube, it's, you know, it's more of a medium now that it used to be sitting in front of a computer, but nowadays almost every television has a YouTube app. So you can watch in your living room, YouTube content 
and the content on YouTube has really in the last couple of years pushed more towards the uh, you know someone sitting in their living room watching television again and just you know small blips as opposed to uh, sitting in front of a computer for you know hours watching the tiny little YouTube uh, frame in the corner uh, so I think that it would be a good avenue to jump on and see what happens and see if we get a little more uh, attention our way. I'd, I'd love to see all the radios. Uh, if you have a YouTube account or even if you don't, you can you can get on there and uh, give us some likes on these. Give us some subscriptions. Let's get some numbers up. And and because uh, the more that we can put, you know, the more people are watching, the more we can focus on the content, you know, getting it out there for you. Cool. Well, do you want to join us for the rest of the show? Or you got stuff to do? I'm good. Yeah, I'll stay if you don't mind. No, not at all. Jeff minds. Look at him. He's seething. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, here, I, I was going to say maybe it's my background. Because we're sharing. Well, back. <laughs> shit. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. We're all good. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're not recording? No, I'm recording. I just... Anyway, hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, before we get started, I want to talk about our sponsors like Atlanta Pizza and Euro, who are open for dine-in services right now. A, uh, you can go there. You can sit down. You can order a meal. You can eat some pizza. You can scratch your nuts while you're sitting there as long as you got some uh, sanitizer because you don't want to get your nut stuff on. So maybe you do. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Please stop me from doing this. Remember last week we were talking about a horrible thing, but it turns out... <laughs> That Mike didn't mind all that much. Um, <laughs> yeah. Listen, if you, I was, I was right. Yeah, I, I read. He, <laughs> you know, you, uh, you just have to go to their website, which is atlantapizzaeuro.com. Uh, Euro is spelled G Y R O. I don't know why I feel like I have to say that. I just think a lot of people, how do you spell Euro? Y E R X 2. No, you don't do it that way. Um, for online orders or uh, for pickup or delivery. And remember, uh, they thank all of you who have supported them throughout this entire year of crazy, weird crap that's going on. And by the way, if you've been to Atlanta Pizza in Euro, please, please, please leave them a review on Google. Let everybody know how good of a time you had and how good the food was because everybody that works there is very, very nice. And we do not want to forget our friend Brett Perkins and his business, LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They have all of your construction printing needs commercial or residential they'll make you a great big schematic not not like a schematic you'd get on your you know your phone if you're jack power but like you know like a big uh, blueprint or whatever uh commercial or residential they're in athens since 2005 they have super fast turnaround and affordable prices call today if you need something like that at 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at dot com. So let's get started. Steph, you got some uh, some news stories? Uh, uh, well, just, just a few little tidbits. Uh, they released the whole, all of the movies that were supposed to come out in March, or was it April when they started shutting the theaters down, I believe? Shit, I don't remember. <laughs> well, this came up, you know, Tenet was supposed to be coming out at the end of this month. Tenet. And, uh... That's the new Christopher Nolan movie. Okay, okay. Which everybody's been in, and they were thinking, oh, this is going to be the one. Everybody's coming back. You know, blah. Well, obviously, the resurgence of our old pal, our old stick in the mud COVID. Our old COVID is back. <laughs> this time it's personal. Don't ask him where he was. He doesn't take your bullshit when it comes to contract tracing. <laughs> it ruins every good time. That's pretty much all he does. So according to Jeff, he's texted me today. This article had said that Tenant was going to be coming out in August, but Jeff said now there's no release date for it. Is that right, Jeff? They say they're going to announce the, re the new release date soon. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. That's all it is, is two weeks to flatten that curve. Then all your favorite movies will be out. Did you hear I'm going to be throwing out the first pitch? Yankees versus Nationals? Yes, I'm going to be throwing out the first pitch. The curve that I throw out will take two weeks to get to home plate, believe it or not. So everybody wash your hands and stay in your house, okay? Dr. Fauci, are they going to be putting masks on the balls? 
The balls will have masks on them. Everybody will be playing with uh, gloves on, and uh, you the bat will slip out of your hand. It'll go flying into the audience and hit one of those cardboard cutouts. Maybe even uh, one of the managers. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be wonderful football. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I want to know how many mascots are going to die from wearing a mask under their mask. Well, we thought it would be great because the mascots, look, I don't care if you're the Philly fanatic or, you know, some baseball. Look, the, the mascots aren't fun anymore. They used to be great and cute. They would like, you'd have a guy wearing Indian war paint and big feathers on his head. That guy got into the game. Now you got some blob with hair. You don't know what the fuck that is. But everybody, wear your masks. Wear your masks, and we'll find out. When movies come back, you can go sit down in the theater. Uh, we'll have a little hole in the mask. You can unzip it so you can slip the popcorn in and the straw for your soda pop. Mm, it is going to be fun going to the movies. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> well, you know, this was going to be a huge release. It was A Quiet Place Part 2. It was supposed to come out March 20th. And uh, it's been moved to September 2nd, so we'll see if that's even going to make it. Um, I'm just looking for some of the bigger ones that we were waiting on. Ooh, Mulan. Mulan was supposed to come out March 27th, and it'll be coming out supposedly August 21st. Who was waiting for that? I don't know. <laughs> they already have a movie. You know, that's like Disney's. Like, oh, yeah. You remember how before streaming, Disney would uh, release from the vault for a limited time. Snow White, available now for the 15th time on VHS. Now on DVD. Yeah. Now on Blu-ray. This is the same thing. They take a classic movie that everybody loved and they go, oh, we're going to put real people in it now. Okay. Well, hopefully it does better than The Lion King, which <laughs> tanked, right? I think it did, yeah. but uh, Aladdin did well, though. Did it really? I think it did. I thought it did pretty well. I don't know. Well, my the one that I was looking the most forward to was the new James Bond, No Time to Die. I've been dying for this to come out. It was supposed to come out April 10th, so they're trying to say maybe November 20th. Possibly we could go back and sit 12 people apart and see this movie. I don't know. We'll see. But you Take your family and take up half the theater at Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd have to do. It's like, oh, we rented out the theater. Um, and of course... I know you guys were dying to see the new Black Widow movie. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, the remake of the old one? <laughs> no, it's... No, it's, it's Scarlett Johansson. Oh. It's ScarJo's... Yeah, her, it's her her big thing. I'm she's, Black Widow. I'm a superhero. I'm, a, I'm Russian. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at my big boobs in this black leather outfit. It's not, what it, it's not for you. <laughs> Well, that was supposed to come out on May 1st, and uh, now they're saying November 6th. So we will see about that. What about um, Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman, you're talking about 1984? Yeah, that was supposed to come out June 5th. So now they're talking October 2nd, maybe, mm -hmm. for that. And another one that I was really looking forward to this summer was the reimagining of Candyman, which looked uh, pretty good. The, the previews for it looked like they had updated it in a way that it was very badass. Looking. I love the original Candyman though. And I that do too. Actor whose name I don't recall. Tony Todd. Yeah, Tony Todd. Uh, he was awesome in that. He was from the. Uh, I love him in Nightmare of um, the Living Dead ninety one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So good in that. But um, so Candyman was supposed to come out June twelfth, and it looks like it's supposed to be coming out October sixteenth, which would be so amazing if, like, at Halloween things were kind of groovy again and that we could go see this movie i i would love it maybe we could even do a radios we're going back into public together thing that would be so incredible i think um and then jeff i know that you've been losing sleep over top gun maverick um and you you talk about it all the time but it's gonna be coming out december 23rd is what they're saying instead of june 26th as that passed on but anyway so that Kevin gillis isn't in it <laughs> Oh, I don't know why. Um, why do you think she's not in it? Because she's old and, you know, hot, not he, hot anymore. And That's not fair. Tom Cruise is old. He's but got he's extra still, But he's what? He's got extra Thetans. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't, doesn't have age, enough, so right. Yeah, she, she, didn't, she aged, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, she's no, like, um, I mean, there's some people, like, have you seen Robin Givens? It's like she looks exactly the same that she did 30 years ago. So it's like, it's hard for women to maintain. <laughs> it was when I was married to her. 
And uh, the biggest one I guess we've talked about on here for real would be the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie, which was supposed to have came out March 5th. And now yeah. that looks like that'll be coming out um, October. Oh, I'm sorry. March 5th, 2021. Uh, yeah. Found yeah. So anyway, those are all the big movies that we've been waiting for. Um, but I'll tell you another big movie that I cannot wait to see because I know we all freaking love Train to Busan, every single person that is here right now. So the sequel has premiered in um, Korea, Peninsula, and it takes place four years after the whole Busan incident and everything is overrun by zombies at this point. Well, it opened last week in Korea and Thailand and places like that and they had a huge opening, like 2.9 million, which is a big deal for them mm. at the box office. So people went back to the movies there. So that was pretty cool that that happened. And um, it's opening up in Malaysia, I think, this past weekend, which the numbers aren't in yet. And I know we're all, I love Train to Busan. I've watched it like five times. I think it's like the best zombie movie since Dawn of the Dead 2004. It really? I, I am, oh, that's my, just my opinion. What about uh, Shaun of the Dead? That was 2006, yep. That was better. I'm biased. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just think of it as a zombie comedy movie. I don't know. Okay, so you take the laughter out of it, and this is the best one. Where it's like, holy shit! Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like Shaun of the Dead didn't have me like, oh god, you know, <laughs> like to like Busan had me through the whole thing. I'm like, oh my god, I'm like about to tear the couch I'm, cushions apart. I just was hoping it was going to be more of, or hope it wasn't going to be like 28 days and then 28 weeks. Mm. That that was a kind of a let down step down. So I was hoping it was going to keep up with Train to Busan. Looks like it's going to. Previews look amazing. The previews do, and the critics are are coming back and saying that it's pretty equal to the to the uh, the main the first movie. So hopefully it'll be good. And my last little thing here is a uh, Keanu Reeves who just never stops evolving, never stops being amazing or awesome. So now he's getting into the comic book world. And uh, he's commissioned and started writing, gotten this whole thing going. It's a, uh, the guy, his uh, character is called Berserker. And he is a, a dude who's trying to hide his identity and he kills people for the government. You know, that old thing. Cool. I wish I could do that. <laughs> but the artwork, you really got to go to Geek Tyrant and look at the artwork. They have all of it there from the upcoming comic book. It looks incredible. And you know, of course, it's supposed to be hyper violent. I mean, and he can have his arms ripped off and have his rib cage kicked out and the shit just kind of grows back. So it's fun stuff. You can tear him apart and then, you know, like that. So that's fun. I like how they have uh, some of the artwork is, uh, is a sad Keanu. You know, it mirrors that meme of him that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, it does. It does. The artist is incredible. So you know they're going to make this into a movie at some point. Or what would be, I think, super cool, I would love to see HBO throw their hat in the ring and do like a Spawn-type animated series like they had years ago. Yeah, the good but, one. Yeah, yeah, and then but do it with something like this with him involved and just make it animated. Don't worry about making it live action. Like, uh, anyway, that's that all of my... Kind of darkly. <laughs> Yeah, but yes. I didn't really care for that. Or oh, was that shot and then they, they went over top? Yeah, of that was rotoscope. Yeah. Rotoscope, okay. Yeah. Well, you don't like Alex Jones and his film debut? <laughs> I just didn't care <laughs> for it. I mean, I miss that old, I loved that Todd McFarlane, just the drawn. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. it just went everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. But anyway, those are all my, my, those are my three little stories. So, and I'm done. Okay, well, you know, we, uh, we have to say rest in peace to a couple people who have uh, passed away. Most uh, recently, we lost a civil rights icon in uh, Georgia. Well, you know, he's a member of the House, John Lewis. He uh, passed away at 80 years old, and there will be all sorts of tributes to him. And, and he did so much for, for the country all those years. And, uh, you know, may he rest in peace. And also, we, uh, right after we recorded our show last week, we found out that Grant Imahara died. And Grant was uh, from Mythbusters, only 49 years old. Can you believe that? I'm 49. It makes me a little nervous. But he had an aneurysm, so. Yeah. yeah. Get, you any, get anybody. You, don't, you mm. can't, don't know. But you imagine that? I mean, uh, just being 49 years old and uh, boom, you're gone. Jeff, have you met him? You've met everybody from this. Yeah, show. well, I, I went to a couple of his panels at DragonCon. Mm-hmm. 
He oh, seemed like a really good guy. Yeah, he did. I, I a lot of people on social media who either worked with him or did special projects with him. They were all saying how how fun he was to work with and and easy to get along with. Unlike the other two main hosts, I've never really seen a lot of that. But uh, anyway, so that's that's sad, and and we all hope he rests in peace. Except for Jeff, he wants him to have a restless afterlife. Where he just <laughs> Isn't that right? You told me that in a text. I hope to be a shambling ghoul that wakes you all up in the night. My chains. Hey, get up now. Hey, hey. <laughs> Are you guys ready to go into 1983? Yeah. Let's take the holiday road. We're going to take the holiday road all the way back to July of 1983, 27 years ago for the uh, youngsters out there. 27 years ago, how many people here were actually in their teens in 1983? I was eight. You were eight. How old are you, Steph? I was 10. Jeff, you were older than me. the math. Yeah, you were 13. And I was 12. And that was a fun summer because it spent the night at Jeff's house, staying up till two in the morning to see some tits on HBO. That was the goal every weekend is to stay up late and see nudity on HBO. But we'll get to that. Starting out with <laughs> movies, you have a pretty interesting collection of movies. I was wrong about one, but we can ignore all that. It was um, 37 years ago. What did I say? 20. I did? Yeah. I said 37. I didn't say 20. <laughs> I said so you can roll the tape back. So 37 years ago, the summer of 1983, in July, we had a bunch of movies released, and we're going to talk about some of them right now. So kicking it off, the bad sequels that came out in July of 1990, 1983, Staying Alive with John Travolta. You guys remember that? The sequel to Saturday Night Fever? Oh, God, that was so terrible. Yes, it was. It had it, a great, great song. It had a couple of good songs in it. Mm, define good. What songs did you like out of? Staying what was the the one song by Frank Stallone? Save me, daddy. <laughs> I am, bum, 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 I bum, am bum. far from over. Far from over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know any of these. This other. is the end. This is the end. Yeah, it's like this movie has too much Stallone influence. I think uh, Sylvester produced it, right? And so he's in a scene walking down the street. <laughs> And they pass each other and they have that weird look. That was when, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stallone had that feathery head. This is Cobretti. It was pre Cobretti. Oh, yeah. Cobretti. I'm headed out to Port Portland in Seattle to round up the dirt bags. <laughs> I need a match. Uh, yeah, I never liked staying alive. I love Saturday Night Fever for two reasons. Uh, the music and the and the just the camp of it all if you if you go back, but also it came out in seventy eight and Travolta in seventy eight was the shit between that and Greece. So he was a big, big star. Uh the other movie that came out, bad sequel, Jaws three D with Dennis Quaid and Bess Armstrong, which was a crappy film. You guys remember that? I oh, loved yeah. it when I was ten though. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody see it in three D? Yes, I saw it in 3D. You did. Your parents took you to the theater when you were 10 to watch a Jaws movie. Yeah, I think, I, why do I think we saw it at the drive-in in 3D? Oh. Yeah. You must have gone with your parents to see it, or unless your dad figured it probably. No. No? No. I it on HBO, so. I, th I think Friday the 13th 3D was the only th three sequel that I saw in the theater. I've in never. 3D. You could tell when they when they put it on HBO and you're watching it on your little TV. You can t you can always tell what they meant for you to see in 3D. Right. You know, it looked terrible, and the shark looked worse than uh, the original Jaws. It's one of those movies I still remember from when we were kids. Jeff told me that they were going to make another Jaws movie, and, and he said it was going to be called Jaws Three People Zero. And I went, no, that, no. that was a real. <laughs> I know it was. <laughs> but Max Lampoon was going to do that. They should have. Yeah, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, but he was right, of course. The concept of it was good, though. The fact, like, they had the underwater walkway. Yeah. Shark attacked. And the idea of that, had it been done visually much better, was pretty scary. Well, to, the, well the original way they were going to make it was just use the 3D for depth, to give mm -hmm. it just depth. But yeah. when the studios saw it, they thought that they 
people wouldn't like it if they didn't walk out and everything popped in their face. So they went in afterwards and doubled the 3D and made things pop out. And that's where it kind of looks like it does now. Like crap. Right. Yeah, like crap. And also having a good script helps. But Bess Armstrong, was she was pretty big around that time, I think. Wasn't I she? Knew you, I knew you were going to bring up Bess Armstrong. I feel like you had a thing, you had a thing for Bess Armstrong and Bonnie Bedelia. Oh, we didn't like Bonnie Bedelia. <laughs> Bobby Bedelia? No, that's Bobby Batista. Bonnie Bedelia. Um, you know, even more than Bess Armstrong, I liked uh, the girl that was in RoboCop. And I'll have to look up her name. I can't think of it. She's uh, the partner at the beginning. She was in a yeah, lot of stuff. I always liked her. She reminded me of uh, what my teacher's daughter at the time. It was like a Karen or a Patricia or something. Karen or Patricia. I don't know. Yes, something like that. Moving along to fantasy. Uh, Krull came out and I put a little note on our show sheet. All I remember about this movie, which I've seen only once on HBO, is the cool spinning blade weapon, the glaive? Glaven, glaven. The glaive, glaven. Yeah. Um, do you guys, do you, I don't, it, it, does it have cultural impact, Krull, beyond that? No, it's, it's a terrible movie, but. Is it? it yeah, it was trying to, this from Family Guy. Yeah, it was trying to breach that, uh, Dune, uh, Flash Gordon, kind of, kind of vibe, and it just kind of fell right in the middle. Yeah, in the back way. <laughs> Didn't yeah. That, that. Now I, I think I, I watched it. You know, it was, these are a lot of a lot of these movies are things I'd watch when I'd skip school or you know just pretend to be sick and stay home because we had HBO, and uh, so it was you know I would just sit and watch these garbage movies because there wasn't anything on between I think one o'clock and three o'clock on regular TV that was a void you had to watch PBS like Palabra Jot and eventually Mr. Rogers would come on and early and you had to sit and watch that even though you're 12 I'm like, ah, but I'll watch this it's better than the news um yeah I don't know the plot of this movie I don't know I just remember the spinny thing the glaive uh and when I was looking into it um Liam Neeson and Robbie Coltrane are both in this film. So that was a couple of early roles for those two. Robbie yeah. Coltrane, of course, is uh, I did. That was one of Neeson's first movies, too. Yeah. I got to get that spinny thing and throw it at people. <laughs> it, was, it was the days John Carter as well. They spent, I think it was the most expensive movie at the time. Really? And yeah, it, that they just lost money on. Now... Now we get into the real meat of July 1983. We're talking comedies. We're talking fun, fun comedy movies. Kicking it all off, of course, is National Lampoon's Vacation with Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Anthony Michael Hall, Christy Brinkley, John Candy, Randy Quaid, and the late Imogene Coca. Well, a lot of people in that list are dead. But Imogene Coca uh, from your show of shows. This movie was great. I wish I could have seen it. I begged my mother to take me to see this movie in the theater, but she wouldn't. And I had to wait for it to come out on, uh, on you know, come on HBO. But you guys, is, it, is National Lampoon's Vacation the first one, the best of all of them? Oh, sure. The best of all yeah. the Vacation sequels? Yeah. 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 Definitely. You had Holiday Road, which was the soundtrack. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know who sang that? Lindsey Buckingham. That's on our playlist. Ooh, silent but deadly. And you also had, so the obsession, I guess, with this film, there's a lot of tropes from that time, like going into an inner city. I believe it's Detroit, isn't it? Where they pull over in the, in the hood and uh, they distract him and steal all the shit off of his car. No, it's yeah, St. Exactly. Louis. St. Louis, okay. Same thing. But you, no. <laughs> Um, Midwest. Uh, so basically the plot, what did they buy that thing just specifically? They bought a station wagon to specifically go across country to go to. No, he got a cool car. He bought a cool car and they didn't have it. So when oh. he went to go pick up his car, they gave him the family truckster. That's right. He was infuriated. <laughs> yeah. He did not want to be seen dead in that thing. He ordered a blue sport package deal and he got that piece of shit. <laughs> and so during the whole trip, it's it's uh, Christy Brinkley in the Ferrari, and finally they they end up at a hotel together, and she's in the pool trying to get him to have fun, and it just doesn't work out, right? Well, yeah, because he he jumps in and he's freezing, and he yeah. starts screaming and wakes up everybody in the hotel, including his wife. This is crazy. This is crazy. Hey, kid. <laughs> um, it's my favorite. Audrey is in this movie. She's the best one, I think. Yeah. And Anthony Michael Hall played the first Rusty. 
Rusty, that's from European Vacation. But he was the first one. He was pretty darn good in this. There's uh, so many iconic moments in this movie. Oh, yeah. Especially, especially when they go visit Cousin Eddie. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. And uh, one of the Jacoby brothers, right? Isn't he? Isn't that one of the Jacobys that gives him the porno mags? <laughs> yeah. Got, like got a whole stack of nudie mags. Nudie uh, mags. Nudie mags. <laughs> I think, yeah, that, and I love European, or I'm sorry, I love uh, Christmas Vacation because it's closer to us being adults and it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a different kind of film, a different feel, but this one's really got that early 80s laugh comedy kind of feel to it. Well, I mean, behind me, you know, it's like just when you think that you've had all the humor you could stand, then you get John Candy at Wally World. Mm-hmm. Sorry, folks, park's closed. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into that BB gun. <laughs> when he punches John the Hughes, too. John Hughes. Oh, he wrote it, right? Directed Written by John Hughes, too. Did he direct it? I don't know if he directed it. He wrote it. Harold Ramis directed it. Yeah, Harold Ramis. Okay. Yeah. You mean like Flaming? Um, the next movie. Now, I don't really remember the plot of this that well. I know a couple of details about it, but this was a huge hit for uh, Michael Keaton. Mr. Mom, Michael Keaton, Terry Garr, Martin Mull. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd, Jeffrey Tambor, and uh, I don't think I saw this in the theater. Again, HBO. Too young to have been going to the theaters, but yeah, this was a classic film, and it really kind of launched him. Or like, Yeah, it was after Gung Ho. Gung Ho was a comedy that he was in, or maybe that was after. I don't know. But this was huge for him, and the critics loved it, and it was a big hit. Jeff, what do you think of that film? Yeah, I love Mr. Mom. Now, what's the plot of it? He loses his job. Terry Garr gets a job. And then he right. stay like a stay at, stay at home dad. Okay. Mr. I saw this one in the theater when I was a kid. I mean, it was kind of the law for everyone that lived in the Metro Detroit area that you had to see this movie. For one thing, it took place in Detroit. You know, oh, it he did? Worked, okay. Yeah, he worked for a major car. You know, that's what he did. And he got laid right. off. And so it was equal to gun. <laughs> it was. And it was also during the, it was white. It was whenever the car industry and, you know, we were going through that bad recession in the early 80s. Yeah, and everybody it, blamed Japan for everything then. Well, and I remember, it, I mean, it just completely crippled industrial areas. Like, mm-hmm. you know, my stepdad worked for the steel mill. He got laid off and he had to hustle and do all kinds of side jobs for almost, God, I think it was like 10 months he was laid off. And so when this movie came out, it was such a big deal. Everybody wanted to see it. And it was, uh, it really lifted you up. Because it was so funny, and it it really made fun of the dicks at these car corporations and how they did you, and just you know, didn't care that you've been there fifteen years and just throw your ass out and stuff. It, Terry Gar was a very very talented comedic actress. I think she should have probably had a lot more uh, on her resume as far as roles from that time. Schooner tuna. Terrific actress. She was my favorite role of hers ever is in uh, Tootsie. She's fantastic in that, just neurotic, mm-hmm. and spacey. And uh, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Mr. Even, Mr. Even, Mom's also. Oh, go ahead, Dustin. I was going to say, Mr. Mom's also he, uh, John Hughes. He, he, he wrote that as well. God, he that t- was the second movie. Everything wow. that he touched pretty much became a huge hit. Yeah. And it certainly, you know emblazoned on our in our minds well, it was so funny too all the jokes with angelian she was very funny and then how he would slip into these fantasies of where he was watching the daytime soap operas and he started he started like living them those were great and the book <laughs> and the whoopee his little yeah, son how he was trying to let go of the whoopee where whoopee comes from that's right yeah people out there uh, the next comedy is Stroker Ace, uh, a Hal Needham film. And, of course, Hal Needham did Smoking the Bandit, Cannibal Run, those kind of films. You know, worked a lot with Burt Reynolds. Lonnie Anderson, Jim Neighbors, uh, Ned Beatty, Bubba Smith, Jan Biner, and uh, Parker Stevenson from The Hardy Boys. I believe he pl- probably played a driver who was his rival. This movie's about a NASCAR driver, down on his luck NASCAR driver, and they shot it all over, like, Lowe's Motor Speedway in uh, Charlotte and Atlanta Motor Speedway. Other than that, I don't really recall the plot of it. because I watched it a lot, but I don't remember it. You guys? I just remember it being a fun fun movie. Mm-hmm. Well, I loved anything Burt Reynolds. There was a time right up until a certain 
certain year in the eighties when I loved Burt Reynolds and anything. And then he made weird movies like the one where he falls off of the Omni hotel. I forget when that one was Sharky's called. machine. Yeah. That movie was, yeah. Oh, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> all I remember, all I remember is he kept art. He kept, it was an argument between his sponsor. He was sponsored by like a fried chicken company. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he, that was, I always thought that was hilarious. That was the, your, your, your villain of the movie is, you know, fried. It's so eighties. Yeah, it's like, really. like hamburger. <laughs> like, any you, yeah any, anytime you can make a, a food movie that's funny. yeah and then the other nascar movie from the 80s was kenny uh, rock's movie six pack but i think mm-hmm. when it comes to nascar comedy films um talladega nights is the best oh sure oh yeah it can bake yeah shake and bake but that's a modern movie with all the sarcasm <laughs> and anti-humor that our generation loves so much <laughs> And uh, in the Days of Thunder, I've never seen. Can you believe that? Another. Yeah. Good, I know it's supposed to be really good, but I've never seen it. It's all right. It's shot very well. <clears throat> it yeah, looks that, amazing. It's a it's a Ron Howard movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, mm. what's his name in that Dick Trickle. <laughs> That's a real guy. I forget. That's what a real guy. Yeah, they all have a weird name. David Truex Jr. He's not a paint. He's a NASCAR driver. Robert Duvall was good in that. Yeah, he was. He was good in anything. And that's that's when Nicole Kidman joined the cult. That's right. Was on that, was on that film. Yeah. No, that's a t- it was Tony Scott. Tony Scott. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say the look. Yeah, he's he's real. That kind of makes sense now that I think about it. Most Tony Scott movies have that that glowing sunset kind of mm-hmm. shot. Yeah. And then no, Ron Howard did the one. He did the indie movie, the indie right. car race movie. Um, the last comedy movie released uh, in, in uh, July of 1993 is Zelig. Now, I want to talk about Zelig a little bit. The fictional documentary, black and white film, Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. Um, it was an interesting film. Jeff, you probably know more about it than I do. Do you remember Zelig well? Yeah. What was it about? It was like a faux, faux documentary about this guy that could blend into any, anybody that he's hanging around with. He like basically turns into him. Really? And so... Yeah. When I saw Forrest Gump for the first time, I thought this is kind of like Zelig. Is is that a correct assessment? I yeah, because he's like in a bunch of different situations, and but f- where Forrest Gump just like stumbled into those situations, he, th- this guy would just find himself with different people, and he would like a, a chameleon. He would like turn into those people. Okay, okay. Hmm. It kind of yeah. I always thought that maybe Forrest Gump had a little influence from Zelig and yeah. also. From Being There, which is a real good movie with Peter Selleck. But yeah, Zelig was a good movie. I highly recommend a rewatch if you if you haven't ever seen it. I mean, if you've seen it not in a long time, do a rewatch or watch it for the first time. If you like Woody Allen films, it's it's not one of those romance comedies that he made. It's just a really interesting film. You ever see it, you guys, Steph, Dustin? Mm-mm. No. It's I'll one of his better, better movies after he stopped the funny movies like Bananas and Take yeah. money and run stuff. Yeah, I don't like anything that he did really until like the two thousands. Really, you don't like those uh, those and, and and our sisters? No, I like uh, I like Midnight in Paris. I like uh, what's the one with uh, Kate ben- Blanchett, Blue Jasmine, like that one. Jeez, it's pretty good. But yeah, I don't like his old crap. I haven't seen in one of his movies since he was the author with uh, with Billy Crystal, the Devil one. I forget what it was called. See, I don't remember. Hannah and her sisters is great though, but those old comedies, I love them. You should, you should try them again. Bananas and uh, take the money and run. They used to, oh, yeah, I've tried them. Or, I've tried them. Well, I just feel like I feel like they're dated for somebody who uh, didn't watch them then, and then you try to watch them now, and it's like, no. You need the I orb. Just, I think you need the orb. I don't think so. I like the history of sex and. That's a good movie too. Everything you always wanted to know about sex. Yeah. Okay. Especially when they're in the brain and Burt Reynolds and Tony Randall are the controlling the sperm and the sheep's. Th- anyway. I'm not yeah. highbrow, Tim. I'm not a purist. If if you know, so many people we like they like shit just because it's old and it's. Yeah. I, don't, pff, I don't care if, it, if it's not interesting. If it's not, if I'm not entertained, I don't give a shit. This Big Mac is vintage from 1982. It's still <laughs> preserved, and you could eat it and you wouldn't die. <laughs> Yeah, take the money and run is is hilarious. Like, 
Is there a way, Jeff, you might know this, or Dustin, maybe even Steph, I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> ostracize anybody. Is there a way where we could have a movie legally, stream it, and watch it with radios and comment on it? Because I think we should do some of that it's, stuff. It's from all, all the streaming services have that watch party feature now. You can do it on Hulu and Netflix. Mm-hmm. You can invite people. Like I'd want yeah. it to be exclusive to Radio Labyrinth people. I think so. Let's let's find out because would you would yeah, you guys love that? That would be fun. I don't know what service um, has a has a you know you'd have to find the movie that you want on the service. Mm-hmm. But I know Hulu has the Watch Party now and Netflix. I suggest waiting for Guffman. I just watched it on Hulu again last night. <laughs> I love that movie. But I yeah, love that movie. Fun. It's so funny. Let's figure that out. I don't know if you do it on Zoom or or whatever, but let's figure it out and then <laughs> let's do it because. Like they say on uh, Google Foods, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. All right. So there's two more films from that summer, from that July. Uh, I call them Brat Pack Sex Romps. Not altogether great films. Just had the same cast of different good-looking young people uh, having sex with each other or having sex with their friend's mom, which is what class is about. It has Andrew McCarthy in it and Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, I guess, uh, is that the one where he goes... Yeah, he goes to England, right? And he ends up at Oxford. No, oh, that's Oxford Blues. That's Oxford Blues. The same fucking plot. But anyway, he's there at a private school or something. <laughs> Rob Lowe starts banging uh, Andrew McCarthy's mother. No, Andrew McCarthy starts banging Rob Lowe's mother. Okay. Yeah. Jacqueline Bissett. That's mm-hmm. I got one thing. Mm-hmm. And that's all I remember. And they, they're friends and they end up not liking each other for a time. Being. I don't know. Rob mm-hmm. Lowe's podcast is good if you're looking for some <clears throat> podcast. To listen to. I didn't know he had a podcast. Does he talk about his old movies? Yes, he does. Oh There's only God. three of them so far. It's called so Literally. Literally. It's called Literally? Literally with Rob Lowe. Nice. Yeah. There's a new one I can listen to. Thank you, Jeff. It's, um, it's, very, uh, it's, it's very funny, but it's, it, it's like the first one he, is him and Chris Pratt. Yeah. And they like basically suck each other off the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you're so good. No, you're so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They suck each other. <laughs> he does like, he, of, he, I would watch that. I would watch that. With Magic Johnson, that's really good. Like, I had no idea he was so knowledgeable about basketball, Rob Lowe. Oh, oh, I, I thought you meant Magic Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> no, Rob Lowe is like a super basketball fan. Like, he, he oh. knows the ins and outs of the Lakers and all kinds of shit. Yeah, and Magic it's Johnson. Podcast, like it. Literally, it's called with Rob Lowe. Magic it's on the. It's on the same network that Conan Needs a Friend is on. Earwolf, I guess. Earwolf. Earwolf. Huh. Well, then, thank you. The, the other movie that came out, probably a little more nudity in it, would be Private School. Uh, Matthew Modine and Phoebe Cates. That's, you know, I just don't, I don't really remember much about that film other than there was nudity in it. Possibility. Yeah, possibility. Kicking off the possibility summer. <laughs> uh, speaking of, like, classic movies, the other day, uh, I, I, I forget, it might have been the Paramount Network, I don't know. I just saw that Joe versus the Volcano was on, so I put it on and I watched that. And then right after Joe versus the Volcano, Bachelor Party came on. So I watched some of that, then I watched the end of it. And then after that, Forrest Gump was on, so it was Tom Hanks Day. And I'm watching these movies and I'm going, there's no way that guy is a, is a child kidnapping freak. I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't care what the conspiracy theory is. What are you? talking about now what are you talking about but you don't know this theory you don't know this conspiracy no. oh my god be you thankful can... that you're normal just this be cool. alex jones shit oh <laughs> it's yeah, tom, tom hanks and spielberg and shit are are part of this whole yeah cabal mm, thing yeah. okay yeah that's tom hanks what i want to know is how come tom hanks's son looks more like john candy than he does tom hanks <laughs> <laughs> wow well, we had a threesome on that you volunteered. Forrest Gump is funnier than I remember it being. Like, there's laughable moments in in every scene, if you're paying yeah. attention. That's yeah, telling. like when the, when his wife comes back and leaves him to be a single dad because she's got AIDS. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> Forrest, uh oh. I like the part when Lieutenant Dan loses his legs. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when Bubba died. <laughs> also funny. Shrimp. It's a funny movie. I mean, some, 
It's drama. It's <laughs> drama. Piss off all of you. That's the movies. From I 19- like the I like the part when Jenny gets molested by her dad. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, please make me a bird and fly far, far, far away from here. Tell me you don't laugh when the doctor comes out and says, boy, your mom really cares about your education or whatever. That <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> Funny stuff. No. All right. So in 1983, a whole bunch of cool new foods that are still around today debuted, starting with chicken McNuggets. Mm. You still eat chicken McNuggets? Or I do not. And go, oh, I'll, I'll I'll have have ten, 10 piece McNuggets every now and then. Yeah. Not right now, I don't, but I would. Now, when I was a kid of, of fatty and training, I had put down a 20 pack oh, at a time. Yeah. But I, had, but I had to have like five hot and spicy mustards. The hot mustard had to have five of those. Oh, those were the 20 pack. Too, right? Back the, then, they used to just give you five, though, if you asked them, you didn't, they didn't go. Extra for the sauces. Yeah, they sweat your balls over the yeah. sauces now. It's like, come on, really? Oh, they asked you. Give me that Szechuan sauce. They're gonna yeah, make it. That was back when parts is parts. That's right, parts is parts. That was Wendy's parts is parts. <laughs> uh, no, wasn't wrong. No, they weren't. <laughs> uh, Crispix cereal came out in 1983. Crispix is crispy times two. It was great with a lot of sugar. Yeah, anything was good with a lot of sugar. That kind of cereal, I would say to my grandma, because my grandma was the, the the best maker of Chex Mix in the history of the world. I said, why don't you try this Chex Mix? It's crispy times too. And she goes, it's not Chex Mix. It's not Chex. Fuck it. I'm getting that. <laughs> Fruit Roll-Ups came out. I remember Jeff was the first person. <laughs> what, I can't, oh, you got some Crispix. <laughs> oh, my God. You actually have Crispix? I didn't I was going to say, I have to, I've, in the last week, I've had two of the things on the list. <laughs> oh, wow. 37-year-old product. Yeah. Wait, is that from the original? Really? Yeah, that's the original run. I eat them one at a time every year. <laughs> every I year have I have one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fruit roll-ups. Jeff was the first person I ever knew who had fruit roll-ups. And uh, I always thought they tasted like leathery fruit. Yeah, that's what it is. Fruit leather. Fruit leather. Uh, Hot Pockets came out in 1983. Those were... Still the same. You didn't. You got you to say it right, Tim. What? Hot pocket. I'm not going to get a hot pocket thing, but the hot pockets have never changed <laughs> since the beginning of time. You bite into it and you burn your mouth. It's like a greasy, disgusting pop tart. <laughs> kills your jaw, kills your mouth. <laughs> got a pepper yeah. And then you break your teeth on the frozen part in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they get the pretzel hot pocket now. I tried those. They all taste the same. They taste yeah. like shit wrapped in, in uh, shit. <laughs> It does not taste like a pretzel at all. No. What, Jeff? No. Hot pocket. Hot pocket. Uh, here's a good one. Candy that came out. Nerds. Those little uh, globs of sour boogers. Those were delicious little nerds. Those were the mm-hmm. best. Loved them. you got to be careful, though, because you get that nerd slurm in your throat. You'll strangle to death. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the only thing you had to have something to drink when you're eating nerds or you'll choke. Right. But not Seven Up or Coke because it would kill you. Was <laughs> right, that? Yeah. No, that was was Pop Pop Rocks. Those are great. I wonder if they still make them. Pop Rocks. Yeah, nerds? Yeah. No, nerds I know they make, but Pop Rocks. No, they still make Pop Rocks. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, they've started putting Pop Rocks. They've kind of made a resurgence. They're in ice cream now. Right. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't want, like, stabby ice cream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and well, somebody, pricey. somebody put Reese's Pieces on the list earlier, so I looked into it. It's 1978 came out but they became popular in yeah, 1983 that's right that's right. E. that's right Elliot. uh let's see some of the pop culture events of 1983 these are specific to the month of july of 1983 uh martina turf Navatrilova, and john on the line McEnroe both won their singles uh at wimbledon back then i watched wimbledon obsessively i would stay up all night watching it because it was on hbo the only place you could watch it, maybe a little bit. Eat, eat strawberries and cream while you watch. No, that's the a U.S. Open. So no, no. <laughs> um, but no, I, that's how I got interested in in tennis. Uh, was in the early '80s watching Wimbledon, the the matches between McEnroe and uh, Bjorn Borg or Yvonne Lendl and Martina versus Chris Everett Lloyd or whatever Chris Everett. Now, those are some good matches, and you know they had the the smaller rackets, you know, and they weren't using those. 
big graphite things are going 200 miles an hour. Uh, but it was, it was a fun time to watch, to watch tennis back then. Um, Mario Brothers debuted in Japan. It was a stand-up video game, and it debuted in arcades before it came over here. Now, I don't know how many of you remember this. I was a big baseball fan, much more so then than I am now. That summer, July 24th, is when the Yankees and Royals had the pine tar incident. You guys familiar with that? I remember I saw- the pine tar incident. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember the incident. Uh, I mean, I remember it being an incident. The particulars, I don't but I remember it being a fiasco. Right. Well, the Yankees were, were leading. Um, they were playing the Royals, and they were, they were beating them. It was a close game. And in the top of the ninth, George Brett hit a go-ahead home run. And Billy Martin, uh, well, they ended up winning the game. And Billy Martin used a technicality, too much pine tar on the bat. Now, there's a certain amount that you were allowed to have on the bat, but it was technical. No one paid any. Uh, yeah, everybody had the same amount of pine tar right. on, on their bats. It right. wasn't like- Everybody was violating the rule, but so, then nobody ever called him on it. But Billy Martin decides, oh, we're going to lose. So, right, right. I'm going to call him on this pine tar bullshit. Yeah. And George yeah. Brett got pissed and he like ran out of the dugout. You remember him running out of the dugout? Yeah. He, the, 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 the umpire looks at the bat and he, he says, out, not a home run. And, and I've never seen a baseball player lose it like that out of the, and tear out of the dugout. He's like, blah, 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 blah. and so the Royals appealed the appealed that decision and uh, the major league baseball said all right well you got to play the game starting with george brett's at bat and uh and play it to the end of the game that's the only way it's going to be fair and the royals ended up winning anyway so i miss billy martin's billy martin screaming all the time i love billy martin he was a he was a hero of mine did he die in a car accident yeah he was drunk driving on new year's eve what was the time gap between there between the game and then the replay uh, not very long, a couple of weeks, I think maybe, maybe longer than that, maybe a month, but not, oh, very, okay. not very long at all. And, uh, Metallica releases their first studio album, kill them all. Oh, yeah. 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 I would not get into this album for like another six years. About three for me. Now let's talk about the top 10 songs from the week ending July 16th. 1983. Coming in at number 10, it's time by Culture Club. What's that noise? It's nothing. <laughs> You'll never hear it. <laughs> I love time. That's a great song. Trying to do a top 10 and somebody's fucking cookies are down. <laughs> Coming in at number nine. Is there something I should know? Like, I'd like to know where my body is. Does my crazy wife have it? Duran Duran. It's buried in Israel, I think. Well, that's good, because I'm Lebanese. <laughs> At number eight, we have a fun band out of somewhere in England. They were, were they ska, or were they something else? I don't really know. It's madness, and our house was first in a string of hits that never seemed to end. Coming in at number seven. Kajak. <laughs> Kajak Gugu. Too shy. I can't tell you what I used to say. Uh, Tim Andrews used to say when he saw the music video because he'd get in trouble. <laughs> it was a different time and we had different values. At number six. The last number one song for the Kinks, Come Dancing. What a great little tune that was. Come dancing. It is something, something. It's only something, something. And about his sister. Oh, yeah. Now his sister's got kids. His now sister it. used to come home late because she was a dirty whore. <laughs> <laughs> At number five, it's Tim <clears throat> Andrews' favorite Michael Jackson song, Wanna Be Starting Something. That's your favorite song, Casey? Or that's Tim's favorite song. What's your favorite song by Michael Jackson, Casey? Ben. I love all songs about rats. Songs about rats, they do it for me. They make my Lebanese nipples cut glass. <laughs> There's one chewing on me right now. Chewing on your nipple. Number four, Sergio Mendez and Never Gonna Let You Go. How did that go, Casey? I don't remember that one. I'll be fucked if I know. 
I, I can only think of the Rick Astley song when I try and think of it. And never that's gonna never going to give you up. Going to hold you in my arms forever? No. Oh, yeah. Never yes. let you go. Yeah, okay. I'm going to hold you in my arms forever. That was actually a good song. <clears throat> At number three. <laughs> Irene Cara, Flashdance, what a feeling. Do you like Flashdance, Casey? Let, let that bucket of water dump on your head. I was, I saw that movie by myself. I, I didn't wear underpants and I had a hole in my pocket. <laughs> you need a little extra butter on your popcorn? Casey's got you. <laughs> Coming in at number two is a Jamaican guy on a motorcycle named Eddie Grant, Electric Avenue. Oi. Hey. <laughs> Oi. Out in the street. Out in the daytime. <laughs> on the dark side of town. That's so what, what was the other? <laughs> what was the other? It was like the count. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the street. <laughs> Come on, Bert and Ernie. Let's go rock down an electric avenue. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> The people are starving. Uh, uh, uh. What was this? What? Did he have another hit? He, he had another hit, though. He had one other song that was. No man, sing the stone. Never leave the da 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 da. I'm romancing the stone. <laughs> and at number one, every breath you take, the police. <laughs> God, all those songs are stuck in my head, man. I mean, all those songs are stuck in my head. <laughs> you beg from the album Synchronicity, the last police album. Can you believe it? Do you think the police will have to change their name? No, I don't think. <laughs> They're not assholes like the chicks. <laughs> hey, we're the chicks now. Oh, you know, women don't like being called chicks. Oh. <laughs> Lady uh, Antebellum changed their name to the uh, Washington Redskins. <laughs> 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 and uh guys that's uh that's uh, 1983 and in the, that's 1983 in a nutshell right as i was developing my plan on how to wipe out all the people with aids <laughs> according to the uh conspiracy nuts out there uh, yeah. that's right in that movie and the fauci played on that's right that's right <laughs> I wish Alan Alda had played me, but he's too tall. I'm I'm very short Italian guy. And that's okay. People love me just because I uh, am not uh, big, fat, and orange. That's why they love me. I wear the mask. What are you going to do? So, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's 1983. wonder what we're going to do next week. Should we do, I don't know. Steph, uh, you want to pick next week? Ne 1933. All right. <laughs> King Kong debuts. <laughs> we'll do Perry Mason time. Look at Faye Ray. She's slaying them with her short, short mini dress that goes just below her calves. <laughs> Look at that gams on that dame. Free pie for everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll be. He goes I'll to be, an island and runs into a jazz singer. I'll be happy to pick next week. Okay. Hey man, that's cool. All right. So you guys want to talk about our playlist? Sure. Okay. I'm keeping mine uh, canon with 1983. Uh, Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant is on there. Our House by Madness. And then one song that wasn't on that list, Human Touch by Rick Springfield, which I rode on my bike to buy the 45 as soon as I saw the video because I love that song. Human, Human Touch. Touch over Affair of the Heart? Uh-huh. You would pick Human Touch over Affair of the Heart? Weren't those off the same album? Well, I don't know, but yeah, maybe. But Human Touch is a great song. Everybody's talking about computers. They're all living with a drum machine. I get so cool and calculated. Oh, <laughs> the modern world. Uh-huh. I loved him. He was on uh, the only soap opera I watched at the time. Yeah. So, Noah like, Drake. He was also, um, he was also uh, Apollo's brother in the original Battlestar Galactica, in case you didn't know that. Uh, and he was also in his own movie, uh, Hard to Hold. Oh, yeah, that was a great film. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely terrible, and I lived for it. It gave me tingles as a child. <laughs> I loved that movie. <laughs> Steph, your turn. 
Oh, mine, I'm staying with 83, just like yourself. I was trying to think of songs that I would have been driving to if I were a teenager at that time and had a car. Yeah, these so, are bicycle songs, because if I was in a car in 1983, I was either listening to shitty pop music or my dad's polka. Or, yeah, these, and I tried to find some stuff that I listen to now that I would have listened to then when I'm driving around. And uh, my number one song from 83 would have been Photograph by Def Leppard. Good song. Freaking love Photograph and Foolin', of course, and Rock of Ages and all that. That was the best. Absolutely. Um, and uh, my other X song would be Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes. Oh, my God. I love Owner of a Lonely Heart. It's the only Yes song I like. Really? Yeah. You don't like Roundabout? You don't yeah. like Leave It? You don't? Oh, get out of here, Jeff. I don't like any other song but that one. Well, there's not enough harpsichord in it or some <laughs> no. shit for you. Anyway. Yes, Odie, only- yes. <laughs> is it only because Weird Al did Odor of a Lonely Heart? <laughs> <laughs> Lose yourself. Anyway, and uh, then the last one, of course, the iconic driving around, singing it at the top of your lungs song, Separate Ways by Journey. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know a guy. <laughs> hey, I saw them in concert with, uh, with Anal. Is that his name? Anyway, I don't know what his name is. I think his name is Anal. He's uh, the Filipino guy that, that is his lead singer now for Journey. That guy sounds exactly like him. And in concert, it's it's unbelievable how he hits all the same notes. It sounds exactly like him. Doesn't look he, like him. He, yeah, I can't look at him though when he's singing because it's it's like no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like his face <laughs> and his mouth. They do weird things. They don't. It's it's you can tell how he's trying to enunciate. He's doing right, his yeah. best to. Sound like that, but if you just heard him, you just shut your eyes. And <laughs> my favorite thing about, well, no, my least favorite thing about the new journey is, you know, when uh, Stephen always had a huge, you know, tight jeans and he always saw his bulge. Oh, yeah. oh, that's your favorite thing? Yeah, one of them. So the nose and the, and the dong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this has been show. my, my thing about Adrian Brody for a while. I'm writing that down. The nose and the dong. That's the name of this week. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, if I had a dong, it would be ridiculous. Lee Small. <laughs> it would be a foot, if not more. Jesus. So. <laughs> Call me the pipe driver. <laughs> Podcast is taking an odd turn. Jeff, what are your songs? I put uh, Mr. Roboto on there. Now, that song, people hate that song, and they hate that whole album, and I don't understand it, because I was 12 when that came out, and boy, it had science fiction, it had Sticks, who I already liked, and I was just into it. You guys ever see the movie, the little half-hour movie? Yeah, Domo. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I mean, try watching it now, it might not be so great, but it was great then, and I think Mr. Roboto is a good song, I don't care. I like it. I didn't know about all the Sticks fans hate it. Because it's a concept album, and it's not like their other old stuff? No, it's not so much as that. It's just that it's super campy, and the other people in Sticks don't like it. Oh, really? hmm Because it was like a passion project of, of his? Yes. And you remember that he left the band after that album. Right. I say they don't like it because they're Killjoys. Yeah. Ah, and he was uh-huh. here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else did I pick? Oh, uh, that Naked Eye song. Great song. Um, there oh, is God. always yeah. something there to remind me. Oh, yeah, that's it. Remind me. The Naked Eye's greatest hits, you should just pull it up on Spotify. Like, they had hit after hit after hit, and you don't, if you, you know, didn't really think about it, I'm telling you every song, you're like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And my last one was She's a Beauty by the Tubes. Great song. Great song. One in a million girls. It was a great MTV video. Wouldn't the guy in the tubes, didn't he end up playing? Yeah, he was the keyboard uh, player for the dead for a while. Yeah, we saw the, him play with the dead at Buffalo. Yep. And I believe 1992 or three, I don't remember. I don't remember. Who wrote Always Something There to Remind Me? I have a feeling that it's a uh, Burt Bacharach song. I don't know for sure, though. I don't, I don't know either. I'm not going to look it up because I <laughs> don't care that much. Um, Dustin, Dustin, you got any songs you want to? Uh, for 1983, um, I just got one. Um, Depeche Mode, Everything Counts, Everything Counts, and Hodge Mouth. 
Yes. Every counts in Baltimore. I've been on a Depeche Mode kick lately. Good band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just hit after hit. Do you, I mean, it's one of those that you, you go to a show. I've been watching a lot of concerts on YouTube, and it's just amazing the number of hits they had. I still can't believe they didn't sue anybody over Baby Shark. but Why? Because Just Can't Get Enough is yeah, Baby yeah, Shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same keyboard line and everything. Wow. I didn't even put that together. Yeah, me either. When I think about you, I go out of my head. I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. That's a jam. See something, something as we fall in love. And I just can't seem to get enough of you. Beep, beep, beep. I get, I get into those moods, though, where I want to listen to all that new wave, techno pop, early 80s stuff. And I'll just listen to it for days. Yeah, I do, too. I go, that's how I listen to music all the time. I'll go through a thing, and then I'm like, I'm going to listen to this, and then I'm going to listen to this. And then, you know, it all recycles itself. And then I force myself to go to Spotify and look for new music. Oh, Spotify's got some good 80s channels, too. They <laughs> oh, do. they do. Yeah. yeah, they do. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Dustin. Uh, let's do what we watched in our staff picks real quick. I'll start since I didn't watch anything. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I've been watching shows on YouTube, like uh, Cooking Through History, or there's a guy I found his channel where he makes old recipes, for, or he makes stuff from old recipe books, and I'll share it in the notes. And uh, my staff pick is the New Pretenders album called Hate for Sale. And I thought, when I saw the title of the album, I'm like, oh, God, this is an anti-Trump record. But <laughs> Chrissy Hind isn't like that. And, uh, and it's just a really interesting, it sounds like it, it came out in 1986. It's, it's fun. Some of the songs are heavy. Some of the songs aren't. I was, was going to say, it sounded, I listened to it a little today. It sounded heavy compared to a lot of Pretender stuff. Well, yeah, it sounds like earlier pretenders then, so yeah. maybe early 80s pretenders. But the, the, the first two or three songs are real enjoyable. So if you are a pretenders fan, I think you're going to like it. So that's my stuff. Uh, my, my thing that I watched, I watched Cursed. Anybody watch that on Netflix? Started to. I'm going to we're going to keep going with it. We, like, we got started and then some, something happened, but it looks good. I mean, it's it's fun fantasy show. It's the pre-King Arthur legend of how he got the sword from the, you know, the lady in the lake or whatever. Look, the strange women lying in ponds distributing yeah. swords is no basis for a system of government. Right. <laughs> this is based on her. Okay. That's pretty good. Could use some more sex and boobs and stuff, but <laughs> I say that about everything. Sesame Street could use more boobs. Let's get out of here. Gross. Um, and my my staff Ooh, pick two is lovely the, boobs. Uh, uh. The final, the final season of Room One Hundred Four starts on, uh, I think it's uh, son, this coming Sunday. Linda oh, Lavin, uh, I love Linda Lavin. I'll be watching that. Alice could use more boobs. No, Mel. Remember her on The Soprano? She's on that one episode where she plays uh, Wendy Kobler, the uh, the uh, shrink who tells Meadow to just. You should go to Europe. Me, just me. Okay, never mind. But this is the final season, so I'm at the probably pull out all the stops and might be pretty good. I should. It's always good, but they started breaking the rules this last season. What's the show about? It's about this hotel room, and every every story. It's an anthology series. Every story is different, and it's directed by a different person. But it started out, it had to be two people on the hotel room, and that was it. And then they started they started breaking the rules to have more more people. And but it's always the the hotel room is the central thing to everything. It's always in the same hotel room. My favorite one last season was the Sam Richardson one for sure. The drywall yeah. guys. That was my favorite. That was a great one. There's, <laughs> there's, there's a terrible one where your buddy from what we do in the shadows eats a eats a dude's dick. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that one. It's the worst episode of the entire series. Oh, I did not <laughs> see that one. They it's two him and another dude, and they check into the hotel room and they give each other these drugs and then they amputate each other's dicks and then eat them. Oh God! <laughs> the cops bust in and try and arrest them, and it turns out it's not illegal, so they end up having to let him go. Right. Terrible. It's horrific, but it's it's Mark Porsche 
so you know it's gonna be fucked up. <laughs> Gross. No thanks. But I'll watch it anyway. Steph? Uh, mine was uh, a, last week HBO dropped a new documentary called Showbiz Kids and it was uh, Alex Winter's passion project. He directed it and put all these kids together. I mean, I'm sure you've heard you know, he's came out and said he was diddled quite a bit yeah. Yeah. when he was a child actor and everything. That's good um, publicity for the next uh, Bill and Ted. <laughs> 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 but uh it was really well done and it didn't just focus on the diddling it you know it went all they went all across the board with what it's just like to be a kid and working you know you got a job from the time you're three years old and they started with baby peggy like in the 20s or whatever the hell and she's and then, the last like old child star that was still alive at the time yeah exactly like and, 104 uh, and what was the what was that kid's name was it Colin Boyce or Cameron Boyce, the Disney Cameron. star, Disney Channel star. He's in it a lot, right. and um, it's very sad, you know, because he died of a seizure right. a few months back. So he died before it came out. But um, it's really good. They have a lot of people like Will Wheaton, Jada Pinkett, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> uh, Elliot from ET, uh, and you know, just they talk about what it's like as you grow older and. Uh, also too when you grow out of being cute and you don't have that look anymore and what that's like and yeah all that jazz but it was really good it was a very good documentary yeah, todd, it wasn't, todd bridges was real good in it too i thought he was he was excellent and just his whole side of how things were for him and uh you know of course they showed the clip our favorite of right. the uh gordon jump bicycle <laughs> hey, come on in, Arnold. Hey, take your shoes off why don't you tell anybody about this huh, arnold <laughs> All I remember from that actor's teeth were like dragging around on the floor when he opened his mouth. But anyway, it was really good. Why didn't so they try, try to molest a gooch? Because gooch would have beat his ass. And that's the thing is molesters. I've never been molested. I guess because I was always, I don't know, I was a terrible child. Nobody wanted to molest me. But I feel like that m- molesters... You're too busy with those chicken McNuggets. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you would have had to tear me away from these nuggets. <laughs> but no, I was, you know, obviously I was very lucky and blessed I wasn't around molesters. Or if I were, they didn't get to molest me. I had an Uncle Wetzel um, who was a touch and go that my mom never let me sit on his lap. We all, you know, everybody has that uncle. Uncle Wetzel? Uncle Wetzel, right. yeah. Went over um, for the Wetzel pretzel. Yeah, I was not allowed to go into the garden with him alone. That was the other thing, too. Never allowed to go into the garden. And I was like, why? And she's like, mm-mm, you're not going with him. So, uh, but... <laughs> I was, I was going to say, to not, to not be around some, you seemed like you missed it a couple of times. <laughs> I think I did get lucky with, with Uncle with Uncle Wetzel. Well, my Aunt Teeny, you know, she was a lovely lady. And why she chose Uncle Wetzel as her husband, nobody knows. But anyway, um, moving on. Showbiz Kids was a good documentary, and, and you should check it out on HBO. <clears throat> and my pick, I found this movie. It, I've been scrolling past it a couple times. It's in Hulu, and it's Nicholas Bershlach-Lodge from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, however the hell you say his last name. Golden Hand, dude? Golden Hand, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's Jamie. And uh, he's the star of this movie, and it's called Small Crimes on Hulu. And man, what a dark, dark-ass movie. It's very, it has that early 90s feel of uh, like an independent, like it's there's comedy, but it's just so damn dark. I couldn't say it's a comedy. There's no right. way that it's a comedy. <clears throat> Um, and obviously, what's his face? Awesome boss from uh, Office Space, you know, Lum- Lumberg. He plays a complete douchebag in it. Uh, June, or uh, damn it, who's the dad? Oh, the dad, Robert Forrester. This is one of his last roles. Yeah, plays, Robert Forrester's in it. Yeah, he, and he plays a really good, he has a great part in this. So I highly recommend Small Crimes on Hulu. It's a great movie. Gary Cole is who you're talking about. Gary yeah. Cole, yes. He has an excellent part in this movie. But yeah, the, what's his face? Jamie, I did not know he, you know, it's like he's good. He's good on Game of Thrones. And I've seen him in a couple other things. But this movie really, to me, shows what a great actor he is. I'll check it out. Dustin, you got a uh, staff pick? 
Um, <clears throat> let's see. I've been watching the. Uh, I got a, access to the Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. uh, the network, so I was watching uh, Spielberg uh, remade or reinvented his Amazing Stories. Yeah, the, uh, the show from the eighties. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty good. I've, watched, I've gone through a few episodes. Um, I think they, it looks like in the le last episode of the season, they kind of do a homage to one of the older ones about the bombardier, uh, the plane, the World right. War II group. <clears throat> but it's pretty good so far. And I watched uh, Greyhound, uh, Tom Hanks's. I mean, yeah, I watched that also. It was okay. It, oh. It's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, but it's just kind of all right. That's, that's about it. There's nothing really, I mean, it looks good. It looks like they spent a lot of money on it. It just seems like the stories, there's no real depth to any of the right. characters. So it's almost like watching, you know, you, someone, a World War II veteran, they'd probably, lo they'd probably love it. But, but yeah, it just doesn't really have much depth as far as a Hanks movie. And he wrote it, so. Had plenty of semen, though. <laughs> yeah, lots of semen all over the place. <laughs> I have no response Old, to that. Typical Hanks. <laughs> I have no response to that. <laughs> Dustin, thank you for being on the show this week and thank yeah, you man. for taking over our YouTube and, and, and taking it hopefully to new places. We really appreciate that. No and problem, guys. Of course, we'll, we'll have you back on again. And uh, you make sure if you're a fan of the show that you follow us on Twitter at Radio underscore Labyrinth. Facebook uh, is Radio Labyrinth or look for the Radio Shack, which is run by Dustin. Our YouTube page should be pretty simple to find. Go to YouTube and type in Radio Labyrinth. Uh, we also have a Spotify page. It's part of my uh, personal Spotify account, so look down in the show notes for the for the uh, description and links. And I wanted to give a real quick plug to our friend Vinny Bucci. Uh, we had him on the show one time, and I worked with him years ago. His uh, series, Booch in the Car, is on uh, YouTube, and I will also include a link there. I've watched the first three. I think another one came out today. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I watched uh, the first three, too. What do yeah. you guys think? It's great. It, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, it's very, very well shot. I mean, it looks amazing. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Kind of gives a lot more insight into uh, the booch. <laughs> really? Hell. Yeah. There's so much undiscovered, I have yet to determine. I mean, I've determined. <laughs> I feel like he might, he, who knows, he might get picked up and put on uh, Hulu or Netflix or something like that. I think, well, I think you're right. Yeah, the, the episode the episode three was up not a day, and it, was, and it busted 2,000 views pretty wow. quick so, i mean that's awesome yeah it, it hopefully hopefully it takes off it looks like he's got a lot more left to show well congratulations to vinnie bucci, mm -hmm. bucci he deserves it. and next right. season you can eat a truck <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna eat a battleship all right guys thank you uh for being here and uh to all of you out there we love you make sure that you uh are sharing liking and subscribing to our various things and if listen if you listen to us on itunes please give us a review and uh, until next week please remember to keep, keep it, 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 it.